nine, eight, seven. We have a go for main engine start. Four, three, two, one, and lift off. Everybody, welcome back to esports and gaming tonight, or today, I should say. I am joined by a really good friend of mine, Mr. MC Adams III. He is the owner of G GWW uh, Eminence Network. Um, the, almost the the whole eFed world. Um, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just <laughs> looking for stuff. How you doing, man? I'm good. I'm great. Um, you know, just maintaining, taking things day by day. Um, excited about being a new father. Um, again, part two. Uh, so, you know, just, you know, just same old two step is what I say. Gotcha. Well, congratulations on being Thank a father you. again. You know, it's a great responsibility and I know you're tired. I know you and your wife here are probably tired, but y'all yeah. keep going. You know, it, it's going to be worth it. <laughs> yeah. But this is well, your that. first time on my show. Brother, welcome. I got to get to know you. So give us your hometown, okay. interesting fact about yourself, and okay. your favorite NFL team. All right. All right. So I'm, I know, I normally, so when I say Maryland, uh, the people's first mind is Baltimore. I'm not from Baltimore. I'm not <laughs> anywhere close to Baltimore. Our Baltimore is literally, literally like an hour away. Um, and if you know anything about Maryland, where I'm from and where folks from Baltimore are from, we don't really bang anyway. So that's Baltimore and we down here. So I, I, I mostly tell people I'm near the nation's capital. I'm closer to DC. Um, <clears throat> I'm near the harbor here in, in Maryland. So that's where I'm at. Um, something interesting about me, man, I'm just, I got a heart for motorcycles. Um, I've been a gamer all my life. Um, I don't know, man. Uh, I look like a lot of people. I look like Theo from the from the Cosby show. I look like Lil Rail. I look like T-Pain. Uh, the list goes on and on. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, that's I, I'm a lookalike uh, for the most part. Uh, my favorite NFL team uh, is the uh, Arizona Cardinals. All right, hey, yeah. hey. good they good squad this year. You know, yeah, Very we'll see, squad. we'll see, <laughs> we'll see. They always they always look good for the first seven games, and then after the bye week, Kyler gets hurt, and the whole thing goes kaboom. I, I don't know. But hey, I'm gonna I'm be real, man. I wasn't gonna say nothing, but you do look like Theo. <laughs> 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 you know? I mean, it, it all depends on your age range. It all depends on your history of TV shows or whatever it may be. So, you know, sometimes I hear when I was younger, some I wanted two, three, four people even said I look like Tommy from Martin. Sometimes mm -hmm. I don't know where they got that from, but. I just, I just, I just went with it. I just started to tell people, no, we don't. I'm just dark skin with glasses. You just naming people that are dark skin and glasses. Stop it. Stop profiling <laughs> me, man. Yeah, like I don't deserve that. No, you don't. If you gonna say it, have me, uh, have me look like they bank account too. <laughs> <laughs> right? I feel that, man. I feel that. Yeah. 
Um, so tell me, why did you start your EFED in the first place? GW Day. Uh, that's a great question, man. Um, the biggest reason was when I got into EFED, um, it was like a brand new world to me. Um, I didn't know it, it, it existed on the on the platform it existed on. I didn't know how big it was. I didn't know this was really happening behind the scenes. Um, what I was doing before call and before e is that myself and my homeboy, who was BGW, that most people know, who's the producer for GWW, uh, Guerrilla Warfare Wrestling. He's the producer. Um, and he's been a long time friend of mine. We went to middle school together and we are still connected. Um, we were kind of doing this on our own um, to the point where I would send him my wrestler and we would come up with matches and play him. I mean, we were doing the whole nine and we would just do it privately and we would do it on YouTube just amongst me, him and a couple of other friends that we had. Um, and then one day I was sending him my character and a guy by the name of Slink saw us exchanging characters. Now, Slink ran a company called LOP and he hit up uh, BGW first and then he hit me up. Um, and that's how we kind of got into the call world together at the same time, basically. And they just opened up my eyes up to a brand new world brand new friends which was very important to me brand new relationships because i enjoy connecting with people um a little personal background about myself i am a former educator as well so i'm always looking to help people um or just connect to people trying to change somebody's life every day uh whether it's just by words or whatever some type of encouragement whatever it is but we broke into the business together and you know, LOP was really good to me. That was home. And then from there, you know, you just start branching out. You start branching out and it, it continues to go. Um, and as I'm sitting there, you know, enjoying what I'm doing, um, I kind of got to the point where what was fun started to feel like work for me. And I felt like this isn't what it's supposed to be. This is not what it's supposed to be. To me, call was supposed to be my escape from the real life issues that I might be having. And I, sometimes, you know, depending upon where you're at, how are you floating through, there was a lot of issues uh, floating in the call world that I just, it's like, we can do better than this, y'all. We can do better than this. Um, but instead of just talking about it, I wanted to be a part of this of trying to make it better trying to get back to the fun trying to get back to the escape of doing this um and that's kind of where it started um so got with brandon with it got with um my other homeboy qc who was the general manager of gww at that time when we were around the first time jada storm was the general manager for the women. So got with her because she was a well-known name as well. And me personally, you know, me thinking how I think, I didn't want to be entwined with the women that much. I wanted somebody they can relate to. Um, so that's why she was the general manager off rip. It just made sense. Um, but this was not knowing what I know now about a lot of the calls on the female side. It's it's only a handful whose character are actually women behind the character. So I didn't realize that at first. Now I know it's, you know, most call females are males. So I could have been talking to them. Uh, but yeah, she was awesome. And uh, that's kind of how we started, man. I just wanted to try to get back to the fun. I just wanted to get back to the fun a little bit, man, and create something different as well. Um, and then I have my own personal issues with WWE. So I was like, man, we can create shows better than what this, what Vince is putting on TV as well. So I think that was really the driving force, just trying to outdo a Vince. You know, I was wondering if that was some of the reasoning 
behind why people create discords and why they create, you know, their own leagues and things like that because WWE has changed. <clears throat> all of it. All of it has changed. I mean, I used to watch it back in the 80s and 90s, dating myself, but I don't care about that. I'm 37. I, I'm, you know, I ain't tripping. Yeah. But, you know, so I'm used to watching certain promos. I'm used to watching certain people put on a, a really good show. And for me, it did lose some of the quality, you know, that it had back then. I understand things change, but you want to change for the better. That's probably right. my personal opinion about that. But, you know, you can you can change so much that you take the, the real purpose for what you were doing out of it because you're trying to make money, because you're trying to appeal to more people, things like that. Just don't lose yourself. And I do get the quality that each of you have, um, the fixer, um, you, um, Luke, you know, mm -hmm. or you have been, I get the, what you're trying to do and make this your own. And in, in, everyone is different in how you present it. And right. I was wondering, knowing that everybody is pretty much presenting the same product, what makes you so different from everyone else? Um, so when we decided to, when we said, okay, we're going to go ahead and do this, one of the driving factors was that question, what sets us, what's going to set us apart? Um, and that's always been a question of mine because I, for a long time, I was in management and I had to sell my product to people when I was in management. And it's like, all right, what makes you different from this other person that just came in here? Uh, and I was man and when I was in management, I was doing security. So I had to sell my, the company to you. Um, and that was always the biggest thing because, you know, you go in there and trying to sell a security company. First thing you want people. First thing people want to look at is the number, right? So you got to make yourself set apart by the number, and then you got to sell yourself, sell the company to make it seem so different. So I took that same mindset into this, like what is going to set us apart? Um, and when I first broke into call, the, one of the first people to take me under their wing, and you'll probably hear this a lot, uh, depending upon who you interview. But Luke Luger was one of the first guys to just absolutely take me under his wing. And he was, I mean, he didn't know me from Joe the Plumber or Bobby Rocks. He was just uh, like, MC, I like what you trying to do, man. If you need help, hit me up. And I, I'm okay, sure. Um, absolutely. And at that time, he was running UFN. Um, and UFN completely different feel it's got a ufc feel to it and i'm like man this is amazing that you turn straight up wrestling game into a ufc fight which is amazing so i was like okay well all the other shows i've been on we we traditionally keep the rules in effect that we watch on tv pinfall submission right so i got into the game and i'm like well knockout is on so one of my mentors is is Luke Luger, so let's incorporate that too. Let's let's be different by actually incorporating the knockout feature in each and every single match, because UFN is submission and KO only. Well, let's add this. So that came along. So then we had to come up with a name that kind of fit the fact that we were doing the knockout situation. And that's how we got to guerrilla warfare. And then it was about we you want we want you to survive here in GWW. We want it to feel like a legit fight. Not so much a wrestling match, but a fight with a lot of storytelling in it. So and if you get caught slipping, you get caught slipping and that and that's what it was for us. We wanted we wanted that knockout situation to set us apart. And the other thing was is when we first started as well, Lucha Underground was around. And I love the concept of Lucha Underground with the griminess, the underground feel to it. So I wanted to kind of bring that into it. As, I didn't want this big production with the big flashy lights, um, only doing that for pay-per-views and things like that. Like 
I don't I don't want you to focus too much on the acoustics and the glitz and glamour. I want you to focus in on what these people have put in into their character and focus in on that match and somebody getting caught slipping, getting getting their head knocked off. Right. Right. And that will happen. <laughs> um Yeah. <laughs> as a matter of fact, that happened last night, you know. <laughs> Yoko. <laughs> Had to get that spot for the Holy Grail, man. You know, it's, right. like, it's grind. Right, and it's, grind. And it's crazy. It's, it's crazy because, I mean, my emotion was real last night. Like, that move you hit, I was not expecting a knockout from that. Not nowhere remotely close. So, you know, but that's the magic of having knockout on sometimes um, because it just happens out of nowhere and it catches. You can't time it. You can't. You can't sit there in the stream and say, okay, this is the it. This is it. You can't do that. You have no idea where that knockout is coming in. It, it all, to me, it keeps the match fresh. You don't know if you're going to get a knockout. You don't know if somebody's going to tap out. You don't know if somebody's just going to lose by pinfall. You know, I mean, even with the rules now, we have in multi matches, you know, sometimes in tag team matches, that thing goes from a 2v2 to a 2v1. And that person that's stuck in that in, in by themselves turns around and wins the match. Like that's you know, things like that can happen. And so it just keeps everything fresh. It keeps us uh behind the scenes on our toes because we like, okay, such and such should win this match. And then they don't. And now we gotta go <laughs> we gotta go figure out what to do next. But at the same time, we're happy about those situations because now the ball is in this person's court and now we're everybody's given the opportunity to see what you're going to do with that ball are you going to run with it you're just going to leave it on the ground so what are the rules for being in gww are you looking for people to promo off often to receive their mm -hmm. matches um what are the rules and regulations some of you briefly um, just for people that are interested in possibly joining. Right. So we, so again, like I said, we want this to be fun. Um, at the same time though, we believe some of the fun comes into you actually breathing life into your character. So yes, we're going to ask for promos. Um, we know, we all know and understand people are not comfortable with public speaking. And that's fine. Some folks have anxieties or are just flat out not comfortable with it. Or they feel like, um, like I said earlier, you know, you're a guy, but you have a female character. That doesn't necessarily work. Um, so, all right. So the rules for GWW. Um, yes, we do look for people to promo. Yes, voice promos are key. However, they're not like a deal breaker or anything like that. We understand people have anxieties or issues speaking publicly or out loud or anything like that. Um, what we try to do to help though is try to give people a skeleton script and you know just points to focus in on and then you make it your own if you're comfortable enough. If not, you simply type up that promo and then we'll put it on screen. We're not going, it, that is not the end all be all. Um, what we do look for is activity though. Um, and we tell people all the time, we don't book you, you book you with your activity. And it's that simple. And your activity is from promos on Twitter or in the Discord channel you being on stream in the chat as much as possible. We understand you have a life. I, like I said, we just had a newborn a month ago. So we, I totally get it. I'm not asking you to be there 24 seven, um, 365 days a week. I'm that, that's just not possible. Um, but when we are live, we ask that you try to be there some of the time, but just at least be there. So people know your Twitch name, at least, at least be there that much. Um, but the rules are, and then we adopted this rule from Fixer, is the 10 hour rule. And this is key because we want folks to, to, what's up here? <laughs> you okay? So yeah. Hi baby. Say hi. Say hi. 
I know. I'm on. Daddy's almost done. You can't. No. Daddy's got to do this. And then I'm. I'm. I'm gonna be finished in a minute. Then. Okay. Okay. All right. So let let Daddy finish this. Yeah. Yep. It sure does. <laughs> Mm-hmm. You're so beautiful. Thank you. Mm-hmm. You just gonna take over the interview? I don't. I cannot tell anybody that little me. All right. All right. Cool. Finish watching your tablet. I'm almost done. <laughs> All right. So. Uh, you that in? You want me to check it out? No. This. I mean, you can leave it in. I mean, I mean, she, I mean, you can leave it in. Um, uh because i mean she's part of the show sometimes that's you know oh. uh you know she'll get on the microphone and talk for a second okay. and you know that's the other part of the show we try to keep it as family oriented as possible even though we want that's the other that's another rule you got to be 18 and over um and there's a reason for that uh, because we're liable to talk about anything sometimes chat just takes over itself so. um but the 10 hour rule is key as well because we want you to actually enjoy what you're saying so the problem we ran into the first time was people was just dropping off their calls and that was it and that's not cool for the other people who are putting work in and who want to actually build this show out that they have nobody to work with so we want to make sure everybody's going to work with everybody everybody's going to take the time to do their part to make their match important our focus is always, no matter where you're on the car, match one or match 100, you should be your own main event and we should feel like you're the main event as well. There, there should never be a feeling like, oh, that was the, no, no, every match should feel like a main event because you put in that much work into drawing the people into your map. Um, so we have that 10 hour rule. So it's just a total of combined 10 hours, which may take two or three shows for you to get to know me uh, behind the table, to get to know the general managers, to get to know the characters as much as possible, to understand the storylines that we have going and to see if you really want to be a part of this. Fixer says it all the time. If this is not something you want to be a part of, you didn't make the mistake. I didn't make a mistake. It's perfectly fine. God gave you free will. Use it to go where you want to go, where you want to enjoy and invest your time. If I'm not the guy for you, if my team is not the team for you, cool. Thank you. We appreciate you nonetheless. We're always going to pre- We appreciate you stopping by for the two minutes that you stopped by because you didn't have to, period. So maybe you tell somebody else, hey, it's not for you, but hey, you should probably check this out. You know, that's how you got to look at things. Um, so the 10 hour rule, the activity on Twitter, Discord and things of that nature. Um, if you have ideas, we are open door. If you have ideas, hit up our general manager QC and we'll see if we can figure some things out and then we'll kind of go from there. Um, I mean, that's basically it, man. Just, just That's basically the rules. And now the match matches, like I said, it's survival of the fittest. You lose by pinfall submission or KO, you know, multi-man matches, tag team matches, they don't end with one fall to the finish most of the time. Um, you got to come ready. Submissions are not allowed as signatures or finishers. They just got to be in your regular moveset. Even that sometimes is fresh because you never know this regular move is going to end a match. You know, it doesn't take a special move to end a match with a submission. And it actually enables people to really put some thought into their moveset because if you you, you know from a efit owner standpoint if you know the right moves to put on as a finisher with submission you know you're going pretty much going to get yourself a victory and now we're not doing that so we're going to keep it fair as fair as possible uh and we're going to have you're going to do some work that's it sounds good sounds simple enough to me um, but tell me, and I know you got to get ready to go, but I want to know, what made you start the Eminence Network? All right, so Eminence Network. So Eminence, as you see on my shirt, started with myself, BGW, and QC as a tag, as a faction or a tag team. Um, 
so that's where the name was derived from brand bgw came up with it um and we liked the name so much and the meaning behind it that we kind of ran with it uh the reason for the network though is i wanted to put together a team of folks small um a team of folks who are on this platform or some type of platform and they're using it for the greater good in a way um the difference between eminence network and most other networks that are throughout the call community a lot of those focus just on the wrestling i wanted to be different i'm always looking to be different so our team is made up of just not folks in the call community but we have djs as well um that are just doing music and they just get some they get on the ones and twos and they tear it up there's something different you know sometimes your mind goes into call overload and we want to be able to give you a break um but these are good people man and these are good people that need to be recognized um and we want to make sure we're doing that as well we want to make sure we're encouraging other folks at the same time hey listen you don't have to get on twitch just to stream wrestling you can stream what you want to stream what you're comfortable with and be good at it man um so we want to be again a driving force behind that as well saying hey mc and them are doing things different so dj candy b is doing something different you know dj level up is doing something different fixer is doing something completely different you know the way his show is set up my man has tours and i mean the whole night you know we in grocery stores and we in bars and we in people's living rooms and my man got a jail like what what are you <laughs> you know but then you got luke who is doing something different as well again doing the ufc thing in a wrestling ring and then you have um another brother of mine Ken Washington doing his thing over on YouTube. Um, so it's just not about Twitch. My man is on YouTube doing his show and his show's completely different. And you know, Ken is the radio voice, man. He's just got a radio voice. Um, so things like that, man, we just wanted to create a network of people to come together and that are focused on the mission of making this community better in any way, shape or form. Um, and that's what it's really all about, man. And then for us, it's about supporting each other. It's about knowing if nobody else is gonna support what we're doing, we're gonna support each other and we're going to actually do that. We just not gonna spit, you know, send smoke up your butt with it oh yeah i support you and then something happened and then it's f you f you. no we're not no we're not doing that we're not doing all that we're going to support you so if don't nobody else show up to fix a show he know he can count on me if nobody else shows up to ufn luke knows he can count on fixer dj candy b if nobody else shows up she knows she got at least three four five people showing up between myself fix and luke bgw qc dj level up it, it, let's go etc you know we we gonna we gonna hold each other down and a lot of times that's all you need you need four or five just you know you can count on because the numbers ain't always gonna be there and it's not about the numbers if i can get one person to watch that's good with me and it's the same thing it was the same way when i approached my education career I only want to change one kid's life today. And if I can do that, it was a great day. You know, that is awesome. And I do get those notifications that come through. I'm in a lot of those communities and mm -hmm. it'll be the fixes on the fixes on Natalia's on Natalia's. And it's <laughs> like, it is a great way for you to let everybody know that, hey, I'm not here. Just come on and say hi and support each other. Because to be a content creator takes a lot of gumption. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of creativity and imagination for you to try to keep it fresh and inviting. And when you have people that will support you in that, no matter what, that 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 says a lot. I have this podcast, and I also have another one called SFL Nights with AJ Stryker for my football league, um, my esports mm -hmm. football league event. And I have like over 200 episodes over there. And my numbers fluctuate, you know? 
but there's a hardcore 20, 25 people that don't matter. It doesn't matter what I put out. It doesn't matter when I put it out. They're going to be there. I don't know who they are. Right. I wish I did know, but that means a lot to me as a creator because I know that my efforts, my time isn't being wasted mm -hmm. on something that I could be, you know, spending it doing some doing other things, you know? So I think right. that that's good that you created this network to be able to support, you know, everybody, you know, with good intentions, of course. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I wish you the best, man, and I hope that you continue to add great people to it and, um, you know, continue to do the good work that you have. Well, speaking of adding great people to it, um, I want to take this time to make an announcement of some sort and let the people know um, that Eminence Network has extended the invitation to yours truly across the screen from me, AJ Stryker, and her podcast, which we're on right now. And she's becoming a part of this family as well. So yes, AJ Stryker and the E-Game situation and the NFL situation now <laughs> is a part of Intermittent's <laughs> Network. And we want to thank you and welcome you with open arms for taking this time and, you know, taking the opportunity to believe in us and what we're doing out here. And so, like I said, man, you are going to have people backing you no matter what. Those numbers, as you said, are going to fluctuate, but you know you got us. So, you know, and that's what we're here to do, man. It's something different. It's something different. It's so different, but it's so great. Um, and that's what we want to bring to the people is greatness, no matter what realm it's in. Uh, so thank you, AJ, for being a part of this family. Uh, so everybody out there, just a quick round of applause for AJ. Yay! Um, and let's do this thing, man. Um, now, with that said, like I said, we want to keep this thing small. We want to keep it family oriented as much as possible. Uh, we don't want people stepping on people's toes and walking on it. No, we're not doing all that. Uh, so we're going to bring you into this family um, and then we're going to go from there, man. I really do appreciate the opportunity. I <laughs> appreciate everything, you know? Um, when you contacted me, I wasn't sure what it was about, you know. I thought I was missing a, you know, I, I was getting ready to have a match and I need to go ahead and put out a promo or something. I'm like, you know, let's go ahead and get this done. You know, right. but, you know, when you told me what you wanted, I just felt a warmth, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's almost like being cold and then when you put like that, that, that coat on, that mm -hmm. warmth that it gives you. It was it was nice to be able to be a part of something that is representing a lot more than just me, you know. Mm -hmm. And I would do that to the best of my abilities. I thank you for the opportunity that you've given me um, for for this, and I'm looking forward to doing great things. You know, I, I understand a close knit group of people, you know, that started it, and all I want to do is just add more positivity and light to it, not take anything away. Right. So yeah. So yeah, man. Thank you. Welcome. Um, Thank you again. again, let me just go through this again, and we're gonna. Uh, we probably just should end it here, uh, so I can get out of here and go be daddy. Uh, my team right now, especially on GWW, for anybody that's interested, uh, the channel name is MC versus Jinx. That is literally MC versus Jinx. Jinx is spelled with a Y though, and not an I, because my name has no definition until I give it one. So just remember that. So you can check us out on Saturday nights on Twitch, MC versus Jinx. Um, we are part of the Eminence Network. You'll see our logo on my channel. You'll see it on Fixer's channel. You'll see it on Luke's channel. Uh, you'll see it on, you switch over to YouTube. You'll see the National Honor Wrestling. Um, you'll see it on DJ Candy B. You'll see it DJ Level Up when he's on. And now you'll see it on AJ Striker. So make sure if nothing else, you follow those people but we do promote others that are not even in the network. You don't have to be in a network for us to support you. It's not, it's not that, you know, it's not that. So, you know, people like GTT and LGF and Mercy, things like that, man. And the Rough Cut Network, you know, make sure you check those guys out if this is where you want to be. It's somewhere, there's, there's a place, there's a home for everybody. Um, but exclusively the GWW understand that 
Yes, I am the owner, the founder, um, and my co-founders are Quentin Carter and BGW. Uh, Quentin Carter is the general manager for both the women and the men. Um, BGW is not so much management, and there's a reason I'm dropping this nugget, uh, and people who watch it, if they watch the show, they don't understand, but BGW is not so much management, but he is our producer. Uh, for GWW, and he does an amazing job making things come to life as well. Um, but most importantly, GWW does not exist without the people who put the work in. And that's everybody who sends us a call, wanting to update or just be on the show in general. Uh, so we thank all of them who show up when we show up, uh, every time we show up. So. The APH is, I'm not gonna go through the whole list, but yeah, I mean, the roster's big, but my champs, uh, my former champs, people who just showed up yesterday, all of y'all to the roster in general. Personally, I thank all of you and I love y'all. Uh, so yeah, so anybody that's looking to join, stop on by, put in them 10 hours, see if you like it. And we'll love to have you, man. We'll love to have you. Um, if we ain't the place for you, trust me, we can we can guide you to the place we want to go. All right. Brother, thank you so much for your time. Let you go ahead. And we're going to have to have a part two because I do have some more questions. And I got to put you on okay. the hot seat because nobody ever escapes my hot seat, sir. But you're lucky today. All, All right. right. Sounds good. <laughs> All right, you brother. Y'all have peace? a good one. Say peace. Peace. <laughs> Hey, you know, man, <laughs> Thanks, AJ. Anytime, brother. Anytime. Y'all be right. safe. Thank you.